What's going on guys, welcome to the video. We are going to take a look at a small clip from BBC Radio 4's Today programme, where they was talking to ardent Ramona Gina Miller, the woman who initiated a legal challenge against the government in 2016 to force them to vote on invoking Article 50, which of course they did, and all of them voted for the default no deal Brexit, so maybe we should thank her for that, as she helped Brexiteers get cross parliament support for a no deal Brexit that even Ramona's signed into law. That's why they're all running around now like headless chickens. Gina appeared on the show today because she plans to start a new legal challenge against Boris Johnson and refute Lord Sumption's claims that Boris Johnson can remain in power until a general election after the 31st of October. First, let's hear what Lord Sumption had to say yesterday for context. Then we will listen to Gina Miller's responses and go over it. Who's more powerful, the Prime Minister or Parliament? Our unwritten constitution is being tested to the limit. The Times reports today that even if Boris Johnson were to lose a vote of no confidence in the House of Commons, he would remain as Prime Minister in order to take the UK out of the EU on October the 31st. A defeat in a vote of no confidence for a Prime Minister used to aut automatically trigger a general election. But that was before the law came in, which states that elections happen every five years, the Fixed-Term Parliament Act. Well, here to discuss the constitutional implications of all of this is Jonathan Sumption, Lord Sumption, a Supreme Court judge until 2018. Good morning. Good morning. And let's just begin with the uh, legal position. If Boris Johnson were to lose a vote of no confidence, a vote which uh, opponents of no deal might uh, bring before the House of Commons, would he be entitled then to stay on as Prime Minister? Absolutely. Uh, what the law says is that uh, there's then 14 days in which Parliament can decide whether there's an another alternative government in which it does have confidence. Uh, the assumption of the Act is that if Parliament does not decide on an alternative government within 14 days, well, the same government remains in power until after the general election. And on the timing of the general election, would it then be possible for him to decide to hold the general election uh, beyond October 31st? In other words, after we had left the European Union? Yes, I think it would. Because what the Act says is that there's got to be uh, 25 working days, five weeks, uh, between the, um, uh, uh, the proclamation uh, of the general election by the Queen uh, and polling day. Add to that the 14 days um, allowed for trying to form a new government and you've got seven weeks. So that means there's a margin of only a few days. Now, under the Act, the Prime Minister decides when the Queen is to make that proclamation and under the Act he decides what polling day is going to be. Uh, so uh, I mean, clearly that's not an unfettered discretion uh, but it seems to me that he does have a margin of, of judgment and he could um, uh, fix the date for polling after the 31st of October. There'd then be no Parliament in existence uh, for a period of at least five weeks before that. And would that be open, do you think, to legal challenge at all? No, I don't think it would. Um, the, uh, uh, the Act gives a discretion uh, to the Prime Minister. Uh, it's not an unlimited discretion, uh, but I can't see how the courts could say that the Prime Minister wasn't entitled to take political considerations into account. It's an intensely political process. What are good political reasons and what are bad political reasons? These aren't questions of law for the courts. Right, so you heard the former Supreme Court judge state, even with a no confidence vote, the PM can stay on until a general election, which could be held after we have left the EU on October the 31st. He points out a general election would take at least seven weeks to happen and Boris does not have to instantly call for a Queen's proclamation. So he could easily hold a general election after the 31st of October, which would not be open to legal challenge, as it's not a question for the courts to even have a say on. So, let's hear what bullshit Gina the Spunk Trumpet Miller claims she can do about it. It's unusual that just two weeks after a new Prime Minister arrives, there's already detailed planning on how to oust him. 
but then, of course, we're not in normal times. We heard from the former judge, Lord Sumption, yesterday that Boris Johnson could defy a motion of no confidence and remain in post in order to fulfil his pledge of leaving the European Union by October the 31st. So where does this leave opponents of no deal? Well, let's talk now to Gina Miller, pro-EU campaigner, who is behind a successful legal challenge over triggering Article 50 and is leading the Best for Britain campaign. Good morning. Um, Can I just correct that? I'm not involved with Best for Britain. Okay, thank you for correcting that, certainly. Uh, But you did have a successful legal challenge. I did, yes. (laughs) um, We're in in, um, uncharted territory, of course, now, but can you foresee circumstances in which you would mount another legal challenge? Well, I did listen to Lord Sumption on your show yesterday morning and what he said to the listeners. And I have to say, much of what he said was political opinion rather than the law. And whilst he is one of the highest respected legal minds, I am fortunate enough to also have highly respected legal minds. And we have a different view from Lord Sumption. In fact, as you may see today in the papers and carry on seeing, there are lots of different constitutional experts and academics voicing their opinion on whether uh, what the Prime Minister can and can't do. And the very fact that you have all these opinions actually heightens the requirement for judicial review and clarity. And our view is that um, when it comes to the Fixed-Term Parliament Act, that act is actually about calling a general election, not about when or how a Prime Minister resigns or a government falls. Um, That is governed by convention. Um, And there is a solid convention that a prime minister losing a vote of no confidence must step down. That is what it says in uh, convention. But the very fact it's convention, doesn't that mean that this may not be a matter for the courts? But this is a crucial point, because whilst the Fixed Term Act does not replace convention, it can be said that the frustration of the principle, which is actually what we invoked in my first case, Miller won, if you like, and we won, would be in play because a Prime Minister Johnson's refusal to go would frustrate the operation and the purpose of the Act and therefore be unlawful. But what Lord Sumption was saying is that because this is an intensely political process, the courts just won't want to get involved. (laughs) The law is the law. And when the Constitution is being stress-tested, as it is now and as we have been seeing over the last few years, then the rule of law is absolutely vitally important that it steps up and actually protects both our our constitution but also um, parliamentary sovereignty because at the end of the day the prime minister does get his or her authority from parliament and so to preserve for the law to be consulted on this matter is absolutely right. Do you think you could be granted a judicial review in time because we're talking about a motion of no confidence, um, perhaps, you know, in in September with the deadline of October 31st? Well, we have already, I have already instructed my legal team to take whatever steps necessary to ensure that that the prime minister doesn't attempt to put themselves above the law and that we would seek some judicial review and clarity. So that is already in motion and we would be ready. Gina Miller, thank you for talking to us. So the host starts off discussing what the Supreme Court judge has said, as we just heard a moment ago, and where it leaves the Ramonas who want to stop it. Gina claims Lord Sumption was using political opinion, when actually he said it's not possible legally multiple times. So she did not listen, she simply heard what she wanted to hear and then gave her own opinion. The guy was a judge. This is not a politician given a political statement. This is a fucking Supreme Court judge, you idiot. She even said he is one of the highest respected legal minds in the country, proving what he says is not going to be a political opinion, but legal fact. He quoted many legal reasons why Boris can do what he wants within reason if the Labour Party and the rest of the Ramonian fuckpigs tried to bring down his government in a no-confidence vote. It would actually help a no-deal Brexit by the sounds of it, which would explain why Boris Johnson is in campaign mode to win a general election with his spending pledges. And when they do try to vote him down, if the Ramonas somehow manage to block no deal on Halloween, he can use the fact Parliament is against the will of the people if we have not left the EU by then. That would be a powerful campaign slogan, let me tell you. But from what the judge said, it's not possible to stop no deal anyway if Boris holds his nerve. So campaigning for Brexit might be irrelevant in the next general election if there's no government to prevent the WTO Brexit on the 31st of October. Did anyone notice Gina Miller's claims that Lord Sumption is wrong because it's just opinion, before she goes on to say he is wrong because we have a different view? Well, Gina, you idiot, last time I checked, 
Your team having a different view on something is literally the same as an opinion, dumbass. You just worded it differently. Of course, forgetting the big difference between you and him is the person you claimed used opinion was a Supreme Court judge who actually has legal knowledge, you know, being a judge. He stated his legal opinion there is nothing a court can do about political decisions, which I expect has probably come up before. His opinions are going to be based in law. It's not a matter for the courts, as he said, so your views are fucking irrelevant, ain't they? The Bayes Broadcasting Corporation's own host even points that out. Conventions are not matters for the court, since they are political conventions and not something the courts can deal with. She claims Boris refusing to go would be unlawful, but as the Supreme Court judge said, if a new government cannot be formed, then Boris remains until a general election, where of course he may well get an outright majority, or a bigger majority through coalition with the Brexit party, depending on the Brexit situation when this election happens. Leaving you idiots right in the shit. Her whole legal basis seems to be around Boris ignoring a no confidence vote, but no one is discussing ignoring the vote of no confidence. The talk is about him using the time he is allowed to call a general election after the 31st of October when we've left the EU on WTO terms. And when we do leave, Gina, I will drink your Ramon in tears with my morning bacon sandwich on the 1st of November as we celebrate a great victory for democracy. Of course, Gina's not finished there, though. She actually claims the Prime Minister gets his authority from the MPs in Parliament. Um, no, love. He gets his authority from the British people who voted the Tory party into government. The Tory MPs in Parliament played a part in choosing their leader, but Boris was chosen by Tory members, so British voters chose him in the end. The people give every single MP in Parliament the authority to represent them. They do not have the right to go against what the people voted for. Remember, they are not entitled to that position, you fucking idiot. They are mandated by the people to uphold democracy. They do not give anyone authority. We give it to them. Just like Dominic Grieve, though, she thinks that MPs' wishes are more important than the public's choice in a democratic vote, the worthless cum bucket. I still can't believe she came on the show trying to rubbish what a judge has said as opinion, while all she has is opinion and the delusion Parliament gives the Prime Minister authority and not the vote in public. Unbelievable. Well, I'm going to end the video there, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I will see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>